Hey everyone, it's Carl with the Tinkerverse. So recently on Facebook, there was a user who was asking how to, um, not so much how to create the shape, but how to distribute these slots, these internal slots, uh, evenly across the, uh, the shape. So I figured this would be a good chance for us to kind of walk through creation of this entire shape and talk about align and distribute and light burn and talk about a few hotkeys that you have available to kind of lock things in place as you're dragging them around and position things on the screen. So stick around and uh, we'll get right to it. So as you can see, I'm using Lightburn, uh, the release candidate, the or beta. Um, it's version 2.0 release candidate three. So I've got dark mode enabled here. Um, but uh, the operations I'm going to show you have been in Lightburn for quite some time, if not going all the way back to even before version one. Um, if I had to guess, I don't remember, but align and distribute are tools that have just been at our fingertips for quite some time. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle on the screen and we're going to make that rectangle, uh, let's see, 100 millimeters wide by 45, let's do 50, it's fine, by 50 millimeters tall. So that is the outside boundary that I'm working with. So now I'm going to make some tabs or some slots rather. So let's say we're working with three millimeter acrylic. And I want three millimeters by, let's do 25 millimeters. Okay, so I've got this shape set to three millimeters high by 25 millimeters wide. And I'm going to grab this and I'm gonna hold the Alt key. And you'll see as I hold the Alt key, it snaps to different points of the shapes that are around it. So if I wanted to snap the center of this to the corner, holding Alt will allow me to do that and you'll just move it around until you see the crosshairs light up where you want them. In this case, I want it to just be centered uh, <clears throat> horizontally and then bottom aligned vertically. So that's going to be my first uh, tab. Then I'm going to control D to duplicate that. And then when I go to rotate this, I'm going to hold shift. And when I hold shift, you'll see that it actually locks me in 15 degree increments. So if I do that, I can lock it vertically. Hey, editor me jumping in here from some point in the future. And just because I know that I'm going to get the comments in, um, uh, in the video, I did want to show that there is a quick and easy way to rotate 90 degrees. So you can select your item and either hit the period or the comma on your keyboard. One will rotate clockwise, one will rotate counterclockwise. So I just, uh, before the comments started rolling in that there's a faster way, uh, I know that, um, but I also wanted to show people that, you know, you can, again, hold shift to lock into those 15 degree increments if you want something other than, um, you know, other than a straight 90 degrees. But for, uh, you know, for being thorough here, you can select it and either hit period or comma and it will do the rotation for you in 90 degree increments. So uh, thanks, back to the video. And then again, I'm gonna hold Alt, and I'm gonna come over here until I get my, cro uh, my guideline vertically centered, and then I'm going to drag it over until I am aligned with the outside of the shape. Same thing, Control D, and I'm gonna drag it over here, again holding Alt, until it snaps there. So now I have that, um, I'm gonna select all of this and I'm gonna choose weld and there we go. So there's the outer uh, kind of tabs and slots for the, ex uh, for the perimeter of the shape. So now the big trick was that he wanted to have slots internal that were evenly distributed. So let's make my slot three millimeters wide by, uh, let's make it um, 12, mil uh, let's make it 15. 15 tall and I'm going to bring that up here somewhere and then I'm going to duplicate that and again I'm going to hold alt and I'm going to drop these on top of each other like that so that they're aligned uh, top to bottom and then I'm just going to come up here to my vertical position and I'm going to remove five from that so what is that 68 <clears throat> and what that'll do is that gives me five millimeters of spacing between the two so that was just you know absolute positioning using uh, X position, Y position. 
Um, so you could do the same thing. You could actually drag this off to the edge of the screen, line it up with zero uh, using, let's see, move to left. Um, so that would give it zero. And one option I have is to do the same thing here is I could put that there and bring those in uh, to let's say 33.3 .3, and it brings it in. Um, I can duplicate that, move those over to 66.6. .6. So that's one option. Um, you know, that's a relatively simple option. If you can reference the edge of your screen, which is a known uh, zero. All right, editor me interrupting the video again because there are just so many cool ways that you can do this in Lightburn. Um, you know, as I'm going through editing the video, I'm looking at it realizing that, uh, you know, you don't have to reference this part to the edge of the screen. It doesn't matter where this part is. As long as you can reference your slots here to the part itself somewhere. So I'm going to, again, hold Alt to keep it vertically centered. And then I'm going to bring it over so that the... Um, uh, that I'm center referenced uh, of my slots on the edge of the part. And then because this part is 100 millimeters wide, I can actually just come up here and go into my X position box. And because you can do math right in here, I'm just going to add 33.333. And then duplicate that and plus 33.333. And there you go. So now because I've got a known 100 millimeters um, width on this part, I know that I can divide that in three, which is 33 and a third, um, duplicate it and do it again. And it's all done with the math up here. But what's cool about that is let's say that this part is uh, not an easy divisible number in your head or whatever. And let's say that this is uh, 97.123 just for sake of argument. So now I can take this and do the same thing. I'm going to hold Alt, keep it vertically positioned and align my centers just like before but because now again this part is 97.123 well order of operations I can do a plus and then put in parentheses 97.123 divided by 3 and so again order of operations in math it's going to do 97.123 divided by 3 and then it's going to add that value to uh, the current position oops Let's move the correct one this time. Um, okay, there we go. So plus 97.123 divided by 3. And there you go. And then if I control D to duplicate that, and then plus 97.123 divided by 3. I missed a parenthesis there. Okay. And there you go. So again, that accomplished the exact same thing just by using math up in the exposition text box um, to take it from the reference edge and move it a third of the way in. And I just, you know, it doesn't have to be anything other than uh, taking that and doing a divide by, th you know, divide by three with some parentheses and you can add that right in the text box. So uh, yeah, cool. Back to the video. So another option is, let me go ahead and get these grouped. So I want these to stay grouped because I'm going to just spread them out. And again, I'm holding Alt to lock, keep me in that um, horizontal or the, the vertical position uh, relative to the outside shape. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna take my group and I'm gonna control D to duplicate that, hold Alt, and drag it over until I'm locked to the left edge. Give me one more copy, lock it to the right edge. And now what I can do is I can grab all of those and notice I'm doing a, a left to right selection. If I do right to left, it's going to select the outside shape too because it's gonna select everything it touches. So I'm doing a left to right select. Select all those and I can do this one of two ways. I can go to arrange and I can say distribute and distribute horizontally spaced. Or I could do the same thing with the toolbars up here and I could go to distribute, distribute H spaced. And so that gave me essentially the same, uh, the same result. It put the pieces right evenly distributed here and then I can come through and delete out my tools basically for a lack of a better term. I used them as tools to give me a reference point to distribute. Uh, so that's option number two. 
Option number three is we can use reference tools. So similar to CAD drawing where maybe you draw a line off of a reference point and you know maybe I draw that line. Uh, let me just for the sake of argument move these out of the way so that they're not positioned right. And maybe I want to give myself a line from the corner here and you can see I'm right on the corner because um, I'm using my snapping. And I'm going to make that line uh, 33.33. Uh, let's make sure that I'm where I want to be, which I'm not. Okay. And then I can grab these and bring that over until I snap to, and you'll see my blue guides. So I'm snapped vertically and then I'm snapped horizontally at the center here. So that's another way to do it. Um, and then I could do the same thing. I could bring this line, duplicate it, snap it, snap it right uh, to the center there, and then bring this over. Um, so, you know, there's a couple ways to do it there. And then last option might be to draw boxes. So if I want a box that's, <clears throat> if I want a box that's 33 and a third, And I can bring this there and then duplicate that a couple times. And there you go. So now I can do the same thing. I can snap this right there. And then I can bring this over and snap that right there. And then when I'm done, just delete my references. Um, or, you know, you can leave the references there if you so choose. And just move them to a tool layer. And the tool layers don't output to the laser when you run the laser job. So you can leave your references on there and just move them to a T1 or T2 layer. Um, and they'll just sit there and be available to you whenever you need them. Or, you know, and then you can hide them if you want. Or you can just delete them if you're completely done with them. So there you go. So that's a couple options um, that you can use to distribute. Um, I showed you, you know, uh, holding the Alt key to kind of snap to, um, you know, snap to... Uh, points around it. If you hold the shift key, um, it locks you to 45 degree increments when you're dragging, so I can't drag it anywhere except for on the 45s. Um, yeah, so I think that uh, I think that covers everything that I wanted to show today, but uh, there you go. If you got any questions, feel free to uh, drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to respond to them, and uh, until next time, we'll catch you guys later.